Hello everyone. Let us learn today seven cervical vertebrae. Now it is also known as vertebrae prominence because of its long spinous process and the tip of which can be felt through the skin at the lower end of the nuchal furrow, right? Now typically the spine is very thick, long, and it's nearly horizontal and it's not bifid, but it ends in a tubercle. See this. If you compare it with the spine of the typical cervical vertebrae, see the length. Compare the length of both. Okay, and see there is a tubercle at the tip of the C7, whereas the spine is bifid for the typical cervical vertebrae. And if you see it from the side, see the direction. For C7, the spine is almost horizontal, whereas for typical cervical vertebrae, the spine is little bit directed downward, and it's very short. Okay. Now, second thing is transverse process, which are comparatively larger. and specifically the posterior part is larger than the anterior part more more importantly the foramen transversorum right they are very small as compared to the typical cervical vertebrae just compare the foramen transversorum of both okay and at times the foramen transversorum may be bifid okay may be duplicated right or may be absent on one or both the side now regarding the attachments the attachments are similar with that of the typical cervical vertebrae for body and lamina specifically the spine the tip of the spine provides attachment to ligamentum nuchi right in addition to it it provides attachment to certain muscles like trapezius rhomboidus minor serratus posterior superior splenius capitis semispinalis thoracis spinalis cervicis interspinalis and multifidus out of it the attachments of ligamentum nuchi trapezius and the rhomboidus minor they are important for remembering right regarding transverse process the foramen transversorum usually transmits only an accessory vertebral vein not vertebral artery remember okay the vertebral artery will pass in front of it in front of the transverse process the transverse process has a large posterior root and has literally only the posterior tubercle over here which is broken in this bone and this provides attachment to suprapleural membrane right the anterior root is thin and small and sometimes it may enlarge and form a separate bone and that we call as the cervical rib right the costo transverse bar is partially deficit the lower border okay it provides attachment to levator costarum right so this is regarding the bony features and some of the important attachments of the c7 vertebrae right its identification point and all hope you understood well thanks for watching